All right, and we are live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode three of the Jiu-Jitsu Times podcast. They haven't fired us yet. <laughs> Still got a job. Still got a job. It's awesome. Yeah, I was. I thought I'd be out of here. Now, <laughs> things may look a little bit different, uh, and that is because we are joined by our first official guest of the show, and what a guest he is, a longtime martial arts practitioner, uh, YouTube channel, just crossed 100,000 subscribers, He's been a really good uh, voice in the conversation of martial arts, both traditional and modern. Uh, and I'm going to really try my best to make sure I got his name right. Uh, Rokas Leonavichus, joining us from Lithuania of the Martial Arts Journey YouTube channel. Oh, um, uh, by the way, I'm Kevin Bradley, joined by Kevin Gallagher. Here I am. There we go. Uh, Rokas, how you doing, man? Good, good. It's uh, great to be here with you guys. Uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, all right. Now, um, for those of uh, our viewers that aren't aware, Rokas has had a very public martial arts transformation uh, beginning about two years ago. Am I right? Yeah, I think uh, two years ago was like a very clear, pivotal point. Maybe it started off. Uh, Rokas, could you speak up again? Your audio went a little. Yeah, I think your headphone went out. Okay, is that, is that, is that working? Is That's that better, working? yeah. I'm 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 getting fine. You good, Kevin? I'm good. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Yeah. So, uh, if you could just provide some more context as to uh, the 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 inciting incident, if you would uh, if you would elaborate, and you you came from Aikido, right? So I did Aikido for uh, more than a decade. Uh, initially, believing that it's for self defense, uh, but then I started understanding that it's not very good at self defense. Somewhere down the line. But I still had that idea that, you know, under very difficult circumstances, it would pop up or there's something good in it. But then I met uh, Jiu-Jitsu Blue Belt uh, and we rolled. And you probably know that's a reoccurring story <laughs> where a black belt gets destroyed. And a black belt adds something, gets destroyed by a blue belt and Jiu-Jitsu. That even more woke my eyes up uh, to the realization that, okay, I'm not really good at this either. Like, so probably Akito was like, really, like, there's a little bit there. Uh, but I knew that, but then a bunch of people still didn't. And I was publishing Aikido videos online. And a lot of Aikido guys were like, oh, your foot is like in the wrong position and your hip should like be slightly turned. And I was like, I was like, guys, it doesn't work anyway. Like, why do you care about it? <laughs> it's like, just do it more or less. And I got frustrated that they don't get it that it's not efficient. So I decided to make a video. But I say that by sacrificing myself because I went on publicly to spar and then I make knowingly that he's going to destroy me. Uh, he was very nice. If you saw the video, he really took care of me and he didn't like knock my teeth out or something. Although I was prepared for that. But then eventually, yeah, I made that video and showed the whole world that even if you practice Aikido for a decade, it doesn't do anything against an MMA guy. But that's like, I think that was the last threshold where I realized, okay, it's like really bad. Like, so inefficient, even more than I thought. So, yeah. Now, um, you had taught, I, I remember, I've been a fan of yours for a long time. In fact, uh, I, I remember I, I was, I left a comment on one of your videos uh, a few nights before I had my blue belt exam, just because your videos were really giving me a lot of positive vibes. And um, I, I just you've, you've had a very public affiliation with Straight Blast Gym, and you you took part in their yeah you're repping them. You took you took part in their in their Wimps to Warriors program, and you're probably the most high profile person to just go through the program. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you found SBG specifically. Hey Kev, real quick. Yeah, but I don't want I don't want to interrupt. We can we can edit this out. Yeah, I Rokus, I would suggest you unplug in your headphones and just go yeah, like that. I think I think the mic the mic is not working right right on your headphone. We could I can I, it's cutting out all the time and I'm missing half of what you're saying. I wasn't. I, yeah, I wasn't yeah. sure. I, I'll go in and I'll be able to go in and like edit and raise yeah. your audio a little bit. Can, can you fix that in post, Kev? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just no, I was no, just no, trying so cool. we didn't go through the whole thing and waste the whole fucking thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, so we, at least yeah. we can freaking. Fun I, I don't fact. Know. 
Fun Maybe fact, we'll run this we, for a second and see if it works okay like this. With, fun with fact, we shot our first ever episode. It ended up being an hour and 30 minutes, and we <laughs> never recorded it. We didn't record, right? We, we <laughs> forgot to press the button. <laughs> That's right. And we were like, we had uncovered the cure for cancer. Oh, we, we, had, we had out. Good cure. It's always your best shows that don't get recorded. Yeah, we had, we had like single-handedly created world peace, oh, yeah. laid out uh, a, got a, that in a resolution. That we were, yeah, we were all good. We, I, I figured out how to create peace in the Middle East, yeah. and it's just gone forever. <laughs> right. We lost I've it all. We didn't record. I've been in those situations as well, so don't worry. I think it's great that that's something I'm learning when I'm doing interviews. And in the past, I would hear, I would see that there's something like off, like the microphone is in the bad position right. or something. And I would be like, nah, I'll just figure it out later. No, you should get that shit now. You said, you know what? Hey, before we go yeah. any farther, we do this for an hour. We look like complete assholes. Let's just, like, <laughs> figure this shit out now. It's cool. We're all friends here. <laughs> yeah. But, but is so, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, it's totally good now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And do you want to and- go through that question again, just in case? Yeah, yeah, no, I was going to. Yeah, you know, what's funny. The, the, the first question we asked, I'd like just for me, I would like to get a little more overview on that because I missed a lot of what you were saying because it was clicking out. I mean, I kind of right. followed yeah. through it, but I was missing a lot of what was going it's on. It's very likely that I'll just snap and go, hey, we're, we <laughs> totally beefed it. The yeah. audio didn't work. Uh, Rokas, just generally a little bit more about your background. We know you started creating content for YouTube uh, two years ago, maybe 2017. And at the beginning, it seemed like you were really focused on maintaining your your aikido roots and sort of changing things around and testing things and there was a very public shift away from that so just take us give us a little bit more context for yeah. your your life story right so i started the aikido when i was 14 uh now it's like a while ago i think it's like 17 years ago and uh initially i thought it's good for self-defense that's why i went there i was kind of a peaceful kid but I was in a rough neighborhood and Aikido promised, oh, you're going to learn self-defense without violence. If that exists, I guess Jiu-Jitsu is probably the closest you can get with it. But I thought Aikido is the thing. And I practiced it. I devoted myself to it. I went to become a living student for three years. I lived in an Aikido school. Uh, and then I eventually got my black belt and opened my own school. So it was my livelihood. It was like a big thing. And, uh, but then I knew it's not, I started to realize it's not very good somewhere down the line. Uh, it gradually, I, I was gradually disillusioned like more and more. Like initially I was like, oh, this is like great. But then I realized maybe it's not that good. Then I rolled with a Jiu-Jitsu blue belt and uh, obviously recurring story, he destroyed me and uh, politely, I mean, he wasn't bad, but it's just like, I couldn't do anything against him. And he told me, like, oh, there's also purple and brown. <laughs> and I was like, Shit, I'm like the bottom, of the, the bottom of the food. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, what, what, how would I fare against other guys? So, so that woke me up even more. And actually, we had a lot of good talks with him. And he kind of opened my eyes to the, the good side of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and mixed martial arts. Because in, in Aikido, at least, uh, I, I went to a lot of different schools and had a lot of different teachers. Uh, not everyone, obviously. But from what I experienced, um, a lot of the Aikido culture tends to, or at least used to, look down upon combat sports like uh, MMA, BJJ. They would say like, "Oh, they're like animals, they're meatheads, or whatever." And I kind of thought maybe they're right, but then that guy showed me that there's nothing like that. It's a great culture, mm-hmm. and eventually it became even more clear that this is not great. Uh, but I was publishing a lot of Aikido videos, like tutorial videos, and uh, some Aikido guys would say, oh, your technique is wrong in this specific tiny measure. And I was frustrated because I said, it doesn't work anyway, so why the hell are you <laughs> giving me shit for that? Uh, and when I realized that there's so many Aikido guys who believe, and actually back then, back back in that day, and that was about two, two and a half years ago, uh, there was that Aikido is too deadly for MMA. It was kind of a common thing to say. And actually, I, I feel I can't, guarantee that the video is the reason that is not said anymore but i have a feeling it's related i hear that way less if ever anymore that aikido is too daily for mma because i found an mma guy sparred with him he destroyed me completely which i was aware of that that's going to happen and uh, yeah i filmed that published it online risking my reputation and my school and everything turned out well because mma and bgd people were like oh this is awesome 
but um, the Aikido people were not happy about that. I imagine not. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were looking for a lot of excuses. They're like, oh, it's your specific style right. and you should have done this or that and that. And I was like, but they, they, they don't try it. Right. They would try, they would know it's the right. same thing. And uh, yeah, that woke me up to kind of that martial arts journey where I publicly started showing my transition from kind of shitting my Aikido identity and moving on to devoting myself fully to initially Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and then mixed martial arts. How long have you been training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for now? Uh, it's been about two and a half years, like if you put it all together. Mm -hmm. But I think I started maybe, I was introduced to it maybe five years ago, but then I, I got like a brief introduction, half a year introduction, then didn't study it because my Aikido instructor wasn't happy right. about it. And we were still in, in our relationship. Uh, and eventually, when we fell apart, I devoted myself to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, did it for about a year, and now it's, I'm training for about a couple of years, like, nonstop. Do you still practice any of your uh, Aikido katas or any kind of Aikido techniques on your own just because it's a part of who you are? It's um, not, no. no. <laughs> not <really>. it's, <laughs> The thing is, I find it so difficult to get into that mode again, especially because I got so much. Can I? I should not swear here. Like, no, you're fine. Right. We can. We can you, drop you a few. Can, yeah, I'll have bleep a, it. I'll bleep it. We have. We have a solid. Uh, what is it? NC fourteen <laughs> rating. Oh, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> PG thirteen rating. So we can drop a few. I think you're allowed to drop one f bomb in a PG thirteen movie. That's the rule. Nice. <laughs> At least one. This one, right? Well, I was about to say. Uh, I got a lot of shit from my keto people online because uh, I mean they were I was initially they would say that I suck and I right. would get frustrated and I would try to prove to them through you know, logical arguments and elaborate videos that you're wrong right and uh, they would get even more frustrated and I would get even more frustrated and there was this big war that lasted for like a half a year where I where I honestly thought I hope some Aikido guy won't just shoot me one day <laughs> it was, it was, I honestly was a bit concerned they were really upset. And then I fell uh, out with my Aikido instructor, who was like a big influence back in the day. Uh, but then that was like a bad fallout. Uh, you know, I, I kind of understood like a lot of the bad things he did without me realizing when I was all Aikido. Mm -hmm. And so that the Aikido, I, I'm starting to find the good things behind it, but it still has that bitter taste. So mm -hmm. when I practice it, I'm like, I don't really like this. <laughs> I still need like time away. It's like, was there, was there, was there kind of a feeling of almost like you've wasted time and effort because all everything I've done is almost pointless. It's it's hard not to do that. And I try not to do that. Right. I can't say it's like a, I appreciate the fact that I did it especially because of my public journey. Mm -hmm. The fact that I was pure Aikido and then off on a video uh, I made uh, made it clear how it didn't work for me, and right. then I found all my transition. That that's kind of a superpower. You know, it's, <laughs> it's hard to get that. Uh, if I would have practiced more MMA mean, before that, it wouldn't be as the picture wouldn't be as clear. So I appreciate that, and there's a good part of mentality from my kiddo that I learned, which I still apply. Right. The, in the, the disciplines of, of of learning how to, to to execute the moves, and there's the the, the... Right thought process of precision and all these other things like that it would go yeah. into that so, so, so some things are good but but at the same time just want to make sure i say of course part of me feels like yeah i wish i had a black belt in right. jiu -jitsu right now. <laughs> so. i have a i have a little a little uh, input onto this just something that i have experienced and this is one of my mantras that when i'm teaching private lessons or when i'm talking to any of my clients or, or, or any of my students in general um the thing about jiu-jitsu that makes jiu-jitsu the best martial arts for self-defense isn't that the idea of jiu-jitsu's techniques are superior to any other martial art. Because I – and maybe you can relate with me. I imagine Lloyd Irving, as flawed as he is as a martial arts instructor, <laughs> he has his problems. And he's, he's clawing his way back into the public eye, and I shouldn't put him on blast like that. I see him out at, at tournaments and stuff like that. Whatever. He, one of, one of the, the biggest things, one of the best things I've ever seen, he, he did a little YouTube presentation where he talked about the effectiveness of martial arts and how every martial art was created for a particular intent. So in other words, like every martial art is effective for what it was created for. Like, so if you talk about how 
kicking <laughs> up in the air. That's just stupid. It's going to be unnecessary. It's never going to come up in common in common practice. Well, if you lived in feudal Japan and you were trying to to knock someone off a horse with a spear, you had to kick up in the air to do that. So you know these guys learned these techniques that were applicable for the times when they were necessary. So keeping that in mind, if you think about a martial art like Krav Maga, like I'm a black belt in jujitsu. And I personally feel like some of the techniques of Krav Maga are far superior for self than, than for self defense application than jujitsu are, particularly when you're dealing with multiple attackers and when weapons are introduced and all the other aspects of you know real life scenarios that pop up. Okay, but the problem with Krav Maga that makes it different than jujitsu, and the problem, the thing about jujitsu that makes it different than most other martial arts is that we can recreate real life scenarios every single day when we train. So in other words, if I come to you and we're going to train jiu-jitsu, I'm going to smack hands with you, and we're going to recreate what a real-life fight is going to be like over the course of a 10-year period. You just can't do that in other martial arts. That Krav Maga. You can't recreate someone trying to stab you with a knife because you'll die. So you can't train that way. So I don't care how many times you pretend to take that knife out of someone's hand. It's never going to be the same as if someone's trying to kill you. <laughs> it's just a different application so what we're truly learning jujitsu is we're not that we're, the techniques are almost secondary what we're really learning to do is how to react and how to think in an intelligent manner under the duress of real true physical danger until a point to where you don't even think about it anymore you, you maintain in your cortex mindset for the entirety of it so i, I mean to ahead. be fair like that might be like you might be training jiu-jitsu for like defense i just think like the geese and rash guards look cool so like, that's, <laughs> <Good. laughs> that's kind of like why i'm here that's funny that was a long answer <laughs> you know, the only reason i bring that up is because talking about martial this is one of my i love talking about this. one of my favorite topics to talk about because i love hey, kev could you step a, a little away from your mic yeah, i feel I, like i'm getting a little feedback yeah i'm getting a little feedback too man i don't know what it is i don't know if it's my mic it's maybe it's maybe I should mute my maybe it's me because I don't have earphones. No, um, it it could be. I'm not sure. You know what uh, I think is happening? I I think he's getting double feedback because I I don't know. Maybe right. I'll, yeah. see, I'll try to mute myself when you speak, and then when I speak, I'll I'll just unmute myself. Yeah, if you want to try that, that's fine. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, I think I think it's all. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think but whatever. It's it. no big deal. Yeah. Hey, don't worry about. It. We'll, yeah. we'll we'll get we'll. It's, it if sounds it, better like that than it was before. You know what I mean? We couldn't we couldn't hear anything you were saying before. So at least now we can hear you. There's a little bit of fucking backlash and shit. Yeah, yeah. Rokas, the the, the, the point. Sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, I just, I just want, it was that. It was that. That's what I wanted to make sure. Well, maybe I'll, when I when I speak, I'll just unmute myself to to make it at least a little bit That's better. Cool. We are still very new at this. <laughs> that was a very sultry. Uh, like comment that your voice got very deep and sexy it was kind of cool well thanks kev you, you know sound like sometimes i sometimes i do smr to pay the bills just because <laughs> uh, i'm a grad student and that's i make great. five dollars an hour that's but great. you know we're just gonna have a good time here today support your local public radio station folks <laughs> hello everybody welcome to npr my name is kevin bradley and we're here with rokas and we're just gonna that's have a good funny. time today all right? you ever see that skit on saturday night live when they make fun of that the the npr station the public radio station i can't i can't hate on npr that was my first job was working oh for NPR. wow yeah, that's pretty cool i, I was i was NPR. doing uh i was like a high school intern working early mornings doing signal uh yeah. writing traffic reports there's a lot of a lot of deer die on the metro north and that's why it it gets the train always <laughs> gets late. <laughs> that's funny yeah so back back to rogus then i'll quit i'll quit freaking uh like meandering on about this but so the idea this is my this is always my thought process when i talk about jiu-jitsu and i always tell this i will never tell anyone that has dedicated their life to a martial art that they wasted their time you know what i mean because even what you learned in aikido like doesn't suck like you're a, you're a master of aikido if you catch someone in the right opportunity with a throw or the kick or a punch like you've trained to do that over and over and over again like a karate guy breaks boards all day long if he does everything at the perfect timing and throws that punch at a perfect range and pits me in the face i'm dead he's gonna crush my fucking skull you know he puts his hand through a cinder block the idea is you're not training that with the app with the with the mindset of applying in a real life scenario against another resisting opponent and that's the missing that's the missing piece to most other older traditional martial arts is this, they haven't evolved to a point to be able to really incorporate that because they're you know you're not living in a feudal world where you have to protect yourself to the death to be able to to, to survive so 
Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm with you there. And something I wanted to add as well is, uh, oh, I just blanked. <laughs> Talk for a long time. <laughs> I just, it took me so much effort to unmute that button. And I was like, I was about to say something so smart. Let me see. Let me recatch what you said. Uh, so feudal Japan, uh, pressure. Okay, yeah, I got it. Sorry. Right. Uh, the issue is I, I have nothing against martial arts. Like, let's say some Aikido schools are saying, oh, we're not good at self-defense whatsoever. We're here just as a lifestyle and whatever. And I'm like, this is great. You know, do your lifestyle thing. The issue is a lot of Aikido schools, and I think that's a common problem with, well, often traditional martial arts, is that they claim we are doing self-defense. Right. And Aikido is guilty of that like many times. Like even I was in Toronto a few weeks ago and, and I got an ad on my phone and just like, I got frustrated, like really bad. It said, learn self-defense, Aikido Toronto or something. I was like, what are you talking about? What self-defense? That's a and dangerous then I went, fraud to perpetrate on people too because it gives people a false, false sense of security when they believe they're safe. And it's, it's, it's not, that's not a cool thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I feel it's like it, it can possibly be life threatening, as, as you pretty much said. And, and I've been in that situation even myself. There's a couple of videos I made about that. But, but I was attacked by like five guys and I stood there. Uh, I punched one guy. He goes down on the ground. Four guys are screaming and yelling. They're like, what the hell? What do we do? They didn't expect me to fight back. Right. <laughs> well, you weren't supposed to hit us. <laughs> yeah, no. It's like I was supposed to get everything right. Yeah, but right. me being the Aikido guy, I was standing there in my Aikido stance waiting for them to attack. Right. So I would you know, respond with some Aikido movement and then they right. pepper sprayed me. So that was <laughs> <of story>. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. But, yeah, I, I ran away. The good side is I ran away. But the thing is, I... Uh, I if I would have known self defense, I would have ran away. That right. was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, or even so, I at least I would have went and became became initiative and and did some damage while they were freaking out. But I was doing my aikido thing. I was standing there, which is ridiculously bad, and that's because of my education in aikido. Right. So, so wait, Rok Rokas, are you are you are you telling me that Steven Seagal lied to me? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I know it's like it's like Santa Claus. <laughs> Learning that Santa Claus is not real. It's the same level, but it is. No, no, that lot. actually that that's one of your other videos that I I really did love when you go into Stephen and I, I I will say, of in the in the martial arts community, you probably dissected that subject in a far nicer and polite manner than anyone else would have. Like they would like you were really you were really giving him. A lot more credit than I've seen a lot of other people get, and I think that's that. You're very polite. You're very, and and that I think that helps your arguments and your your the things you say travel a lot further. Like, yeah. is that a conscious effort on your part, or is that just you? You're a nice guy. <laughs> uh, it is actually both, to be honest, and I, I am a nice guy in general. But at a certain point, uh, when I got super frustrated with everyone saying bullshit again about me and about making ridiculous claims, I, I started losing my patience and my politeness. And uh, But what I realized is, you, you probably know like things like con uh, cognitive dissonance, when somebody, when you attack somebody's beliefs or they feel threatened, a self certain self-defense mechanism turns on psychologically, and they're not hearing what you're saying anymore. They're just in frustration and they're just hitting back with whatever. Living and I realized that's... Right now. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Um, and so what I started to learn is it's not always just about politeness, but I'm trying to kind of be on both sides at the same time. Obviously, I'm leaning towards one side more, but I, I realized that if I want to reach people, I do have to be more kind of open in the way I talk about it. And that helps bring through my communication, I think. Yeah, and I, I will say just in to, to loop back to something you said about uh, wasting your time. I think that that's really the biggest feeling that you get when you jump into martial arts. Like, like I started jujitsu at 19, like fairly late into the time where I will have a lot of free time to pick up new hobbies. And I started training with old friends of mine over the summer back 
at home. And then, then when I went to school, I was desperate to keep that. I didn't want to forget anything. Like I figured if I don't train, I'm going to forget how to do an arm bar and I'll just go back to being normal. So I found a, the closest school, a martial arts school to where I live. Uh, they, they're a sport jujitsu place. And it was, I, I, I didn't know anything. I figured, Oh, the jujitsu, I know that word. It's the same thing. I'll go there. And I am, I'm still not great at this. I'm figuring most of this out as I go. My first day, I was able to tap one of their black belts. <laughs> and uh, that was the first, I, at, after that, I should have I should have not done anything. I should have left and never come back. But in my head, I'm like, oh, he was, he was just put going easy on me. And then the next day, I did it again to a different black belt. And he tried to save face by stopping everything and then inviting everyone around. Like I got him in an arm bar and he, he timed out. Everyone was live rolling. He timed out and invited everyone around and then told me what I was doing wrong. <laughs> and funny. I was just like, I, I felt bad. I'm like, oh man, of course. Yeah, I'm so sorry. And it took, I was there for about eight months before my, I taught, I was talking to my coach about my experience there like man i'm just i'm screwing up i'm like and i was telling him he's like kevin get the hell out of there now don't give them any more of your money because i i know what you want you want to keep going but they're it's a cult they're they're getting into your head and convincing you that you're wrong and if you keep <laughs> if you stay in that environment you're just gonna not like martial arts anymore and so i think that's something that you were you might have been did, did you feel like I was wondering because you said you had fallen out with Aikido and you're a lot of the people in that world. Do you think if you had stuck and tried to stay in that world, you might have lost some of your desire to be a martial artist altogether? Or do you think it, it, that's a little different? It's hard to say, but definitely it, I, I did start, as I mentioned before, starting feeling bitter about the whole process. Like there's part of me which regrets when I look back and I imagine myself like when I was early in my early 20s or or even before that i was trained i could train like for five seven eight hours per day and just like i was nuts i would train like four in the morning and i had a limitless amount of energy and i had that enthusiasm to train uh but now that i just turned 30 30 i feel like i can't my body can't handle that anymore like like mentally i would be down for that but after a few hours of training i'm like okay i had enough like just like, and that enthusiasm is not the same. I can maintain that consistency. I can get myself to the gym, no problem every day, but I feel like I'm not the same as I used to be then. And uh, I don't know if that's like, I used it all up in Aikido, that sense of enthusiasm and, and that I was just so hungry at that time. And that hunger is not there as much anymore. I don't know whether I have less to prove or whether again, it's just my age or I don't, I can say specifically what it is, but I feel like I used up my hunger during my Aikido years and I'm just gradually working up the ladder and of experience uh, as I'm now. And, and so that's, that's something that I could say. What I've know. noticed, what I've noticed is I've gotten older and, and more advanced in, in, in life. What, when, when you start to lose, you know, passion tends to switch. Sometimes you can't always burn like a, like a fire when you're super excited, when you're young and you want to go out there and do good things because your body kind of breaks down. You just can't, you can't live at that pace anymore. So the passion, particularly with you, someone that's already mastered one martial art, there's less of an ego involved with you because you already understand what it takes to go down that road. You're not, you're not concerned with, with, with following to the short pitfalls of pride as you progressing towards the end, the end game. And it's really just about your quest for knowledge now. And you've accepted that. One, one thing I noticed as I got older, it was less about like glory and more about just, okay, cool, this is something fun that I'm enjoying and I'm getting better at. I want to continue down that road, particularly after I got to my black belt. Because there's that, that old saying that once you get your black belt, there's really nothing else to prove. Like, Because every other belt you get, all you're thinking about, your entire focus is how do I get that next belt? You know what I mean? When you're a blue belt, the only thing you're thinking about is, sweet, I want to be a purple belt. So what do I got to do to get a purple belt? And there's that, that, there's that, you know, there's that like, uh, there's that like anxiety about that. And when you get your black belt, what else is there? It, what the and the answer is, the quest for knowledge. You you, you do jujitsu because you love it. 
not because you need something from it. You know, anywhere you want it to give you something. You, you follow me? Oh so, yeah, but. yeah, one hundred percent. And it's 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 interesting that, that you said that. Now I'm looking back, and I realize that's uh, very true to my experience. I just never kind of put it that way. But yeah, basically, I when I was back training back in the day, Aikido black belt was a motivating force for me. I was like, oh, I want that black right. belt, I want that sense of power. I, I was like yearning to tr learn all these techniques and so on and so on. Uh, and now as I'm doing jiu-jitsu, I mean, Brazilian jiu-jitsu obviously, uh, I don't, I mean, it's nice. I got my blue belt and I was like, oh, that's fun. But it's like nothing changed. And, right. and that purple belt is not my goal. I want, and even like, even with techniques, I, I'm not interested in learning more techniques. I just want the most effective ones. Right. I just want to be good. And yeah, it's it feels uh, I resonate with that very much. How long did it take you to get your black belt, Nikita? Uh, actually, longer than most due to some factors. Uh, I think it was about six, eight years. Okay. But so in Aikido, what's like what's years. what's four years? Five years is the is the usual. That's still. I mean, that's still. Hang on, guys. I'm yeah. gonna keep talking. Yeah. I just gotta go do something real quick. Yeah, cool. That's uh, that's still an extended period of time. I mean, that's long enough to really understand the the hardships of training martial arts because it's a four year period is still enough time where you're gonna hit plateaus. You're not gonna see immediate progress. You have to push through those. You have to have the, you know, the what's the the the, the faith that it's gonna get better and you're gonna learn more. You're not you're not you're not worse than everybody. Else. You know, you still have the anxiety of that which is what one of the things that makes it so hard to get your black belt in jujitsu is because it shit, it takes eight, 10 years to get your black belt in jujitsu. And through that course of time, you're going to get injured. You're going to have plateaus all over the fucking place. You're going to have moments where you feel like this is it. What's going on? How come I used to be better than Joe? How come Joe's tapping me now? What's going on here? You know what I mean? But the point being is because you've already gone through that, you know, you understand that you understand all those things. So it's not the anxiety is still there, but it's not really as much. The day after I got my blue belt, I my first practice back, I rolled for like an hour with my professor. And afterwards, he was like, yeah, you're a blue belt. And then he threw it at me. And That's he's cool. like, no, let's go get some sushi. <laughs> my, 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 Ed Berberich, my coach, if you're listening to this, you're, you're an asshole. But I love you. You're a great guy. Uh, blue and blue I thought I was I – was, I, for a moment, I was mistaken into thinking I was hot shit. And then, and then next practice – Two white belts beat the shit out of me. Blue belt, blue belt's a fun belt. Blue belt is it's fun. It's a a lot of fun stuff happens. Yeah. There's a lot of metamorphosis. Blue belt, you, just, blue you realize fun. you realize that no matter what happens, you're garbage. Yeah. Well, well, the thing about being a blue belt is, is like you still suck, but at least you're not a fucking white belt. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, no, like you, 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 still you, have, the, you still have a little bit of pride to be like, well, you know, like I'm a, I'm a blue belt. I, I Rokas, <laughs> I'm like I'm sorry that you have to learn this here, but it's so fun to bully people that are like technically oh, lower than you. That's the, that's the reason why being a blue belt is so cool because it's the first time. I mean, you just got your ass kicked beyond belief for six months, and you hated everything. Yeah. Like little girls were beating you down like a rag doll. Now you learn a few <laughs> things, and you get to be the guy that comes in and goes, "Hmm, let me." Let me go pick on this white belt in the corner and show him a few things. You know, I'm going to be a monster. Yeah, I get to there's be There's an mean. empowering feeling to that. I can remember the when I got my blue belt. I think getting your blue belt is probably the most uh, rewarding belt or the coolest belt because at least now you may, you know you made it through the hard part. At least now you get to be the hammer sometimes. Man, I put that blue belt on, bro. I remember coming to the gym. I tied it up. Did my gi up over my shoulder and strapped it in there, like strutting around like I was freaking John Travolta coming home from Saturday night last Saturday night fever, man. It was freaking uh it was cool, man. Blue belt's a fun belt. Yeah, for me, it was funny for me because uh I uh, as soon as I got I, I got my blue belt just before I left uh, Portland, where I was doing like an intensive course. And uh, the next uh, training camp I had, it was SBG Ireland. And I was training with a pro team. So those guys, they're training like not only jiu-jitsu, but MMA. They're training ten, literally 10 times more than I did, like 10 to 15 times more. And uh, I get to roll with them most of the times. Like I got to roll with them like for a month or two months and also like with strikes included. And I was just like, I suck so bad. You know, I don't know anything. And then just before I left, it's funny that it's the way it happened. But just before I left, I went to... Uh, after a few months of training there, I went to a jiu-jitsu class 
it was like a advanced jujitsu class. And at the end, uh, no gi. So at the end we roll and I submit one other guy, like out of five rolls that I had uh, with random guys, I submitted four of them. And I was like, each time I was like, what belt are you? And some, and most, of, most of them were like white belt, advanced or, or blue belt. And they're like, I'm blue belt. I'm like, really? What does that mean? Like, did you give up? I, I, I thought like, I initially thought maybe they're giving up. You know, I never beat anyone. So. So I was like, oh, blue yeah, belt, like, blue belt is learn. still a belt where you're not completely technically savvy to to alleviate or to to overcome ridiculous athleticism. You know what I mean? So if you're you have a you have a long time martial arts, a lot of martial arts experience, you're probably a decent athlete. You're probably bigger, stronger. Than oh, somebody he's, else, he's right? I can confirm he's ripped. Yeah, yeah right. So yeah. like all those can say like blue belt is cool. But you can still like you can still get away with doing things incorrectly against the blue belt and then dominate it. And the blue belt will still pull you aside. But well, you know, like you 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 really that pass was cool, but you're really supposed to do this, this, and this. Like, oh, that's cool. How was you still choked though? You still like <laughs> your eyes roll back in your head when I got that. How was the grip on that cross collar choke? That was that pretty good. <laughs> Ro- Rokus, what Kevin Gallagher is doing right now is he's offering to humble you, he's calling <laughs> you out. He wants yeah. like he wants that matchup. Never, all right, never. In a 2020 <laughs> and Mr. Rokas, if it ever did come to that you would have a the, the the biggest smile on my face while i did it with you and i would i would lead you down the road to righteousness in a in the appropriate in the appropriate manner <laughs> well, to, be, to be honest i was i was I, i'm very appreciative that my first jiu-jitsu mentor like the guy who taught me jiu-jitsu he told me early on that if when you roll with a black belt or just an, a more advanced person but mostly a black belt that if you will roll with him just to learn, he'll care, he'll yes. care for you and be nice. But yeah, if you right, try right. to defeat him, he's going to smash you so yeah. hard. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> no, no. no. Don't 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 I don't will never bear. forget the first time I rolled with Ed. It was like a few months into jujitsu, jitsu And until, up to that point, he's like, I have maybe 30 pounds on him. Up till that point, he was treating me like, like really with kid gloves. And I started to know submissions. And I remember the first time I ever actively tried to do anything for to him. I was on top. He had let me get side control. Suddenly, I was now mounted by him. And he was Ezekiel choking me. And he was looking straight ahead, not even at me, just at the wall yeah. as I was just struggling to tap. And it was like... He's like, yeah, that's that's what's gonna happen, <laughs> and I'm like, that's not cool, man. And so ne- then, like every time I would aggress to him, he would just immediately turn it on and like wake up, and then I would be flatlined. <laughs> yeah, there's, I mean, when you roll with a black belt, you roll with most upper belts for that matter, black belt in particular. If a black belt agrees to roll with you and you're a lower belt, you should take that as an opportunity, unless you know you're a competitor and you know what's going on. I mean, and, and whatever. I'm a black belt. I don't like black belts that piss and moan about some guy that went hard with him. I hate that shit. Like you're in the gym, you're a black belt. You should be able to. You should. You know what? You you you've been doing this for a long, long time. You should be able to freaking alleviate his pressure because you know what the hell you're doing. This kid doesn't, and he's excited because he's rolling with a black belt. I don't like people in black belts that bitch about this. However, I will say this. If you are that lower belt and you decide you want to bump it up against your black belt instructor or a black belt who is taking the time out to show you a few things and say, okay, cool, come on, roll with me, then be prepared for the hell that may befall you if you piss that person off. So, All right, absolutely. And, you know, it's interesting, too. Uh, it's something I address in my channel all the time, but but that's what I appreciate about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and, and martial arts with pressure tests is that it's, there's always a way to humble you and to remind you that yes. you're not the best. Right. In Aikido, you don't get that after like four or five years. You're the best guy and that's you know, it. That's and there's it. No, there's no, no one there that can that could counter that. And it, it, if it is, it's some weird like, you know, tribunal of elders that will discuss it. There's nothing like, there's no real trial by combat. You know, in jujitsu, there's always yeah. like, hey, you know what? My name's on the wall. You're tough. Cool. You can beat me. You can put your name up there. You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. essentially how it works. And like <laughs> 99.99% of the time, the guy coming in thinks he's tough goes down. You know, and that's, yeah. that's the thing that, again, when we start talking about what separates jujitsu from other martial arts, we can rely upon that. It's, 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 it's combat 
oriented. We, we, we can decide by who's the best, by who wins, you know? Yeah, I agree. Kev, do you want to do you want to get into some current events or do you want to keep doing it? Well, well, actually, I got about 15 real, minutes left. Real quick, I just yeah. wanted to while we still have yeah. you yeah. uh cuz I know your schedule is yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, me, me and Rokus will will keep cool. going. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, cool. I but, mean, I got um, I got another 10 15 minutes. I was just wondering yeah, if you I wanted to yeah. I wanted to do something a little special since uh hang on. My computer's being dumb just like me. Okay, here we go. I wanted get, to do something everyone, way, I wanted to do something yeah, no, uh, Rokas yeah, is this, a this dope. Is good. This is cool. I'm excited. At first, I, I'm, we don't have to air this if you don't want. At first, I was skeptical. <laughs> At first, I was skeptical when he talked about an Aikido guy. But it was interesting to hear. And I don't mean it. Now I don't mean it again. I don't mean that to. Uh, don't worry, I get it. But I, but well, I, was, I was, Rokas, I was, we thought we thought you'd be dumb. I mean, just no, like kind of dumb, you know? It's I was, like I was whatever. Hoping, I was hoping that it would be because when you when something for the same reasons of, of what we talked about before, a lot of the guys from other martial arts are very close minded. They don't want to hear anything, and it's like, all right, cool. And whenever you want to give me a call, we can we can hash this out. You know, you know what I mean? But coming from your background, the way that you moved on, you you have the Aikido black belt, you move on to other things. It's an interesting perspective, something that I'm curious about myself because this is a thing that I dwell upon about the effectiveness of jujitsu over other martial arts so it's cool to hear your perspective no thanks i appreciate it and, and it's something i i'm with you 100 like if i meet an aikido guy like as, as kevin said i am a polite guy and i especially like on publicly i'm sometimes i'm pushing buttons because i need to yeah you gotta you gotta, you gotta get the clicks baby <laughs> yeah, like as well. like, i have to provoke people to think as well but right. then when I meet people like Aikido people in the street or cafe or whatever, and they're like, oh, I do Aikido. I'm like, oh, really? And I'm like, I'm not excited. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to talk to you, man. <laughs> that look on your face, that's let's like – let's, let's not talk about martial arts. Let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about something else. else. Like, what else do you do? <laughs> that's what I say when I meet Aikido. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's not That's true. the that's same – that's like the same look on – my my face if i find out like like so what do you, what's your big thing well i'm a scientologist you know like <laughs> praise you know, and then what do whatever they my th do you want to get your thetan level tested no, ah, absolutely, absolutely not get those yeah. okay so so real okay. quick i just wanted to uh bring a little something to the the party uh we have uh, unlike a lot of people Rokus was kind enough to document his first ever oh, Brazilian cool, Jiu Jitsu man. match. Oh. And something I really liked was that like you were really open about talking about how you tried to throw in some some Aikido in there. And we happen to have a three time IBJJF <laughs> Masters champion. <laughs> So, if with your permission, we can cut this totally. With your permission, okay, I good. thought it would be fun if we go like if we look at some parts of it. Like uh, it's not that long, but uh, and I would love to talk about a bit, a bit about how your game might have developed since then. Well, I'm because, I'm curious too because I know I I have a black belt friend of mine that is also uh, an Aikido black belt that trained Aikido for a long time, and like <clears throat> like I said. I really believe that once you continue to train jiu-jitsu for a while and you start to understand that mindset of staying calm under duress and things like that, what's going to happen is, is you're going to find some of your Aikido movements are effective for you in jiu-jitsu and in real life and in real life application because you're going to understand like the reality of how things are supposed to work. Like his grip game is, is impressive because of his Aikido. He understands how to manipulate yeah. joints and do the, the little intangible things. All right. So let's just take a look. Uh, loving the loving the rash guard, by the way. Are you are you on the right or you're the, the Batman? Right. I'm the he's Batman. 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 Also, if you know, he's he's significantly beefed up and and gotten a haircut since then. So <laughs> haircut is most important. How tall are you, right. Rogers? Uh, six two. Oh, you're a big kid. Yeah. Yeah. Big yeah. How tall yeah, are you, Kevin? So I'm I'm five. Uh, what what do I tell people? I'm six, uh -huh. uh, right now sitting down on this on this live stream. I'm six four, six two. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm five five eight. <laughs> five eight, yeah. Yeah, I'm the sh I'm, uh, If this was in real life, I would be a monster. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Yeah, no, it would not be good. So, Rokus, right, like, good. real quick, right here, what's going through your head? I know you had you had done commentary over this, but I, since it's been so long, I was wondering if you if you had any. Yeah, yeah, thoughts. sure. I, I do want to say a quick disclaimer. I, so I was doing jujitsu for four months in like a proper gym academy. And before that, my friend was teaching me a bit of jujitsu for like a half a year, but, but not like, you know, not like very, it wasn't like a clear on. You were going into this from a, from an Aikido mindset though. Uh, not really. It's like, it's, I did want to pull off a certain wrist lock, which mm -hmm. I will. Yeah. Yeah. 
but and I just asked the judge. I was like, if I do this, like, is that okay? Are not going to disqualify me? He's like, yeah, yeah, go for it. I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. But that was like, that was it. And otherwise, I it was very intuitive. Basically, like, whatever I'm going to do is just like trying to figure things out as I'm doing them. So yeah, so early, early on in my jujitsu career, <laughs> disclaimer ended. Okay, so it's a little slow. There's a lot of hand fighting. And you, you're doing, you look a lot better than your, your MMA fight, just automatically. You're, you're, you're controlling the wrists. And yeah, yeah, yeah so. for sure. It's like, to be honest, I'm not sure. Like, I'm, again, I'm, I'm being very intuitive here. So I'm just trying whatever is working. I don't have, like, that's the, the struggle which I had. And I, to, to part I do still have is I don't have, like, you know, this is my game A. And if game, game A doesn't work, I go to game B. And I go to game C if that doesn't work. There at that moment, there's no game A besides that wrist lock. So, I'm gonna go. So I'm I'll just make a few. I'll make a few. Uh, I, I re- actually real quick, Kevin. I think the wrist lock's coming up. There, uh, there it is. Yeah. So you you're able to hit that. Yeah. So that's right. that's an Aikido wrist lock. But this, in Aikido, nobody steps back. Right. <laughs> they just <laughs> right. right. So they just gotta let it happen. Right. Back, right. Posture it up, and I was like, shit. Why did what that happen? What do I do now? <laughs> yeah. But Kevin, you're about to say something. So what I was going to say, the one thing that I was going to notice is just watching in the way you're standing, like looking at your stance and the way you're carrying yourself. It's very, very different from what I conceive of what a traditional Aikido stance would be. You're very, very rigid. You're lowering your levels, whereas opposed in Aikido, there'd be a more fluid motion to it. So automatically, just from the start, just from the very beginnings, we start to see how you have to alter what you're a keto mindset would be because you're again you're you know a master of a keto just to be able to 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 compensate what a real life scenario would be like against another person because if you stand straight up and you flow through he's probably gonna shoot a double leg on you but you know you're not even trying to go down that road it's already starting to come become very clear that you're not safe following those parameters 100 percent. yeah i yeah. agree yeah so yeah, and you're you're able to get the takedown. Yeah, no, that's... it's too bad the ref was in in front, but I was like, oh, that <laughs> that happened. I was just gonna say there are there are blue belts that don't get takedowns <laughs> in competition, it, it so automatically, like, was... like that's a that's big. Like it, it looked like it was yeah. off a reaction from that wrist lock as he was moving I back. Think, yeah. He kind of like came in. He had to jerk away from that wrist lock, so the wrist lock was effective. There you go. See, there you go. The yeah. the the the. the your 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 aikido became effective because you started to learn jujitsu, right? <laughs> now it looks like it looks like he's got you in like he's got one of your legs in like three quarter guard. Like he, you're you're not able to get fully to mount, but you've got solid top control. Yeah, I think it's also too. I'm not like at that day. I'm not sure like how to position myself. So again, just trying to figure things out. But but it there was a good position to begin. Yeah, you're collecting the head. It, it, it looks like you're doing everything. Like, if you were to tell me that, like, you had been training as long as you had, I would have assumed you'd been training longer, just like with how much you've done up till this point. Now, like, uh, and now uh, right here, you're getting like you're you're losing position, and I was just wondering if you're oh, like if you remember enough about that day to like know what what would be different now. Like in terms of just, w- would it be that you you know how to stay on top better or? Oh yeah, I, I love the mount. I mean, again, I'm still a very very much a beginner, but mount is one of my favorite positions. And and Coach Matt Thornton, one of my mentors, he he taught me some some essential parts of the mount, which is the position which I I, I tend to have a good hang on, especially with guys of my level. I they hate my mount, so I wish that was. I, I knew whatever I know now mm. that day. Uh, but obviously, yeah, I'm not specifically holding something. But it's funny. One thing I do remember, what was going through my mind, and that was the main thing. I think somewhere along the lines, we'll see that. I'm looking at the at the, at the the watch, at the clock, and I'm, and then I'm thinking, it's been only that, <laughs> like, it's only that much time passed. And it's like, <laughs> I'm already exhausted. And this is like, it feels like forever. <laughs> so that, was, that was for sure in my mind. All right, it looks like you've got a, a triangle locked up. So you something like that, yeah. Yeah, so you're 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 going you're attacking even at like losing position. That's really good. I yeah, I, I triangles. I my triangles suck, so I always like I'm always happy to see people do them just because I'm like, man, you're living my dream. I I, I love 
the triangle, especially with long legs. Uh, it's one of my go-tos, but I think I didn't have an arm in and I wasn't smart enough to understand that that's the missing part. But I think eventually I understood it and just let it go and then just try to go for, again, a dominant position. You see, I actually empathize with this guy a lot just because my go-to position almost always is like deep half, like really getting in there and then working a sweep and collecting a leg. But you know, a lot you're... lockdown on your leg. That sucks. Lockdown sucks. Oh yeah. That's that's never fun. You're also like you're also if you hold the lockdown too long, you're in danger of really screwing up your own legs. Like I've I've almost hyperextended my <coughs> ankle. One of my um one of my blue ball guys, he's about to get his purple ball. He blew his leg out at the worlds last year. Oh. Being, a, being in lockdown, some guy had his, had his leg in lockdown and just freaking swept him, and he tried to fight it, and he was a big dude. He just went, <laughs> he heard his leg just go pop, 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 pop. So, oh. so at this point, you, you're this guy's uh, past your guard in into half guard. Uh, what's going through your head? Again, I think that was the main thing is is that I was just I was I was too tense. Uh, absolutely, that's for sure and I was putting too much effort into every movement again just not being clear on what I'm doing so so there is a lot of, I, I think I, I was spent by that moment so it was more about survival and how do I last through this so yeah I think it was more about the kind of survival instinct rather than participating Kev, guys yeah. I'm gonna get going here man I gotta I gotta go teach a private lesson at 4 at 30 so I gotta all go right go. well then all right man I mean to cut you guys off but yeah, no worries. Yeah, well, man, we sorry. just want I just thought it'd be I always like to revisit no, no, those cool, matches. Cool, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean, all right. So Kev, man. we'll yeah, be man. seeing you. Me and yeah. Rokas will wrap this up. Yeah, yeah brother. Rokas, it was great, man. Honest, honest, yes, honest, honest, honestly, man. It was really cool talking to you, man. I uh, I, mm-hmm. I appreciated that. It was it's here to cool your cool perspective. And you're a cool kid, bro. Keep keep doing jujitsu, man. You're gonna be cool. Thank you. All right, brother. Thank I'll you. see you guys. Kev, hit me up, man. All right, catch you later, man. All right. Okay. Thank God. All right. He scares me so much. I'm terrified. I'm terrified of him so much. How how did it get that? How did how did it become so that you're working together though? Oh well, uh, it's a little. I don't know if we've ever told this story, but um, we're both writers for the Jiu-Jitsu Times, which is uh, I don't know if you've you've read us, but we're uh, an MMA Jiu-Jitsu news uh, website. Are you are you still there? Rokas? Rokas? Hello? Hello? All right. Sorry, my Wi-Fi uh, blanked out. Uh, no worries, sorry. no worries. But yeah, no. Um, I uh, I've been writing. I, I've uh, I'm just gonna mute you because I think the feedback is still happening. I had been writing for the Jujitsu Times for which is like a our news website run by uh, our boss Kit. Um, we'd been writing for a while. I had started writing around this time last year, and um, we're we were looking to expand to YouTube. And, and create more content. So I pitched this show to Kit and essentially said, uh, I'll, you know, I'll just, I'll, I, I like doing this stuff. So, uh, and plus I, I mainly use it as an excuse to talk to the cool people that I've always wanted to talk to. And you were, you're one of them. Uh, and so, yeah, it, it's, uh, he, um, he said I would need a co-host and I'm like, Oh, well, who'd you have in mind? And he's like, well, there, we also, we have uh, I don't know if you know this, we have a uh, multi IBJJF champion, kevin gallagher and he has his own audio setup and i'm like all right fistful of kevin's i like it and uh that's that's how it started we've uh we've been doing a few episodes and uh we're 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 learning as we go but it's been really fun yeah yeah i i can relate with you i know what you mean and i think uh, so so basically where, where i can definitely relate with initially um when I started getting interviews with, like I, I did my own podcast thing or I do some interviews here and there. And initially it was all about people I know and just people around me. And then I started needing better guests. And <laughs> there, there was like a quick jump suddenly because especially after Aikido versus MMA got a lot of attention and 
some people were like, oh, if you want to talk to me, I'm like, what, really? And I was freaking out so bad. I was like, ah, how do I do this? But then after you, you do it again and again and again, and eventually you're like, ah, it's like, you just get used to it. But just, yeah, I think most of the times it just becomes natural. But but initially I remember that moment. And also too, I feel like Kevin has, uh, he has that <laughs> super chill vibe of, you know, he he's kind of a, seems like a bit of a stoic guy. So I know that that can be as well a bit intimidating or like, is he like thinking right now or <laughs> so? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had only seen pictures of him. And so I was terrified just because he looks like a block of granite. Um, and uh, when we when we did our first episode that we just totally beefed and didn't even record, we had ended up talking for like 90 minutes. And it was really like a lot of good chemistry there. And that's why we we continued on with it. And uh, I just I've I've come to realize that anyone that goes the distance and gets a black belt has like almost is almost required to have a very fascinating like backstory and just what leads them there. So eventually I'll just try and get as many different types of, of uh, practitioners on as possible. Like one of my one of my best friends that I live with, uh, I found this out after we had agreed to move in together was that he's a black belt in Kyokushin black belt in Taekwondo Muay Thai. Like he's been trained, like he can kick the head off a mule. Like he's just, he's been, he's been immersed in this world since he was a kid and uh, he's been looking to get into the grappling, but yeah, I, that's a, uh, one of the last things I want to talk about is the uh, Aikido versus MMA. That was like where, was that where your channel started? And I only asked because the production on that whole thing is so good. And, and like, you, you've clearly got a lot of experience. Like where did that production experience come from? Yeah. So uh, there's, there's kind of two sides to it. So, so in the production sense, uh, obviously now I look back, I'm like, Oh, I should have done this, should have done that. But I think I agree. Like it's, it's, it's pretty solid compared to like some random regular YouTube video. But in uh, beforehand, like I'm a, I won't go too far, but I'm a believer in kind of a uh, certain sense of flow. Like basically, uh, I won't expand, but there's a, an idea of follow your bliss. It's introduced by a writer of a Year with a Thousand Faces. Long story short, his idea is that jo Joseph Campbell. Yes, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if you know, uh, it's, uh, follow your bliss is basically the idea that life inherently wants you to do something or it's favorable for you to do something. And then if you, whatever you like, if you do that long enough, you're going to become good at it and it's going to become your fulfillment and uh, video editing, um, kind of publishing stuff online uh, was a thing I always enjoyed. And so I used to do just random videos for myself or for the Aikido dojo I was in, do some videos for them Eventually, I had to do a few videos for my own dojo when I opened it up. Uh, and I just kind of started getting that experience. But also, too, the other side of it, I did have also direct experience with YouTube before that video. Because, uh, and I think not, not, not a lot of people know that anymore. And uh, I'm actually thinking about it, readdressing that on the channel. Before I switched to the martial arts journey, it was an all Aikido channel where I was doing Aikido tutorials. And I was the third from what I know, the third biggest Aikido channel in the world. So that's something I had to sacrifice for the journey. Uh, but but yeah, I did some Aikido tutorial videos before that. So that was also a good chance to kind of get used to the whole YouTube vibe before going to the Aikido versus MMA. I'm, I'm, I'm sure Lenny Sly was happy when that third place spot opened up. He could just slide in there. <laughs> well, I think actually when I say third, I think, uh, I can't remember who was first, who was second. But actually I was Lenny Sly and Aikido Flow Guys, who now we are, all know each other and uh, yeah. we, we have a friend relationship. Uh, I, they were, I can't remember which was first, which was second, but they were in front of me i was the third guy so yeah like <laughs> on on the mount rushmore you're you're roosevelt <laughs> sure that's yeah I'm yeah that's that's on the the Aikido, youtube mma yeah so but you were you're saying you have a a friendly relationship with those guys now that that's 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 good just especially because you've you've transitioned so much uh it's what do you think caused that healthy relationship to to be there 
it's a funny story because Lenny Sly and uh, I'll just maybe say a few words if somebody doesn't know who he is who's watching the channel, uh, who's watching this video. He's kind of a very tough uh, Aikido guy. Uh, also, I don't want to say too much out loud, but I, I spoke to him like you know person to person. I mean, not like face to face, but but he's not. He he tones down himself in reality. He has a bit of a YouTube presence where he's just kind of a super macho Aikido guy, but he's also it's not like unreal to him. I can see the and, veins and the veins in his arms. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, he's a character for sure. Yeah. And then uh, initially, he actually hated me. Like he hated my guts, uh, and I knew that because he was he was speaking about me publicly. Like like after the Aikido versus the May video, he he was really against that. He was saying, you know, this is this guy's is crazy stupid whatever uh but i didn't feel i have didn't have bad feelings about him and there was this uh, one day there was this facebook uh kind of a comment whatever section where there were a lot of different comments and somebody was discussing i think they spoke about me and lenny sly was there and eventually i chipped in i i kind of said look lenny you know i don't have anything against you you know the only reason i did this was actually for the sake of the aikido and i kind of just kind of honestly spoke to him uh, wrote down whatever i feel uh was true and he was touched by it and he liked that message a lot we started going back and forth and we realized actually there's some things we're on the same page on and then we had like a long call through skype and we realized you know what we're, we're actually we're, we we have different perspectives. We, there are differences between what we do, but we respect each other a lot and we kind of have each other's backs. So so that was very cool, actually. Yeah, I I do remember thinking he's not like, like he's a very interesting dude. Like like I think most people that are comfortable putting themselves out there are very at the end of the day just interesting people looking to to tell stories or, or put a message out there, and it's up to you to to figure that out. But you've also, I think one of the best examples of your positive relationship with the more traditional community is with the karate, you and the karate nerd. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, was, that was crazy, like actually, that didn't happen. But yeah. 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 So just like, uh, and all, I don't know if that helped. Uh, like, did you talk to Bill Superfoot Wallace before that or after that? No. So the, the karate nerd, uh, again, to make sure everyone is included, uh, he was, he's yeah. like a big, Especially like now we're that not that far in subscribers, but back in the day I used to look at him and I was like, whoa, he's a big YouTube celebrity, you know, variety channel, and and he's kind of open minded too. Uh, but uh, but I wasn't like deeply into his content, but I knew he's there and I had a lot of respect for what he does. Uh, he has high good production value and so on and so on. And then uh, it was like really weird the way it happened. I made a video uh, called. Um, how to spot a McDojo? I think that was that was the name. Yeah. Like it's, I love that video because it's like the list items are are great, but they were not my invention. I just put in a couple, uh, but it was like lists of stuff. How to spot a McDojo? A funny, funny one, and also true. Uh, but then somebody suggested me that that list, and I said, "Is it yours?" He's like, "Yeah, it's mine." And I said, "Can I use it?" And he's like, "Yeah, okay." Turns out, as soon as I published the video, it's actually Jesse's Karate Nerds original list and i i got so frustrated because you know i i i don't want to get into a bad relationship with him even before i know him and so he writes a comment in my section i'm like sorry man you know there's nothing I, it wasn't intentional and he's like you know it's cool and i was like oh he's such a nice guy and i was publishing that video while i was in london uh filming uh, a bellator event for john cavanagh and uh that same day or the next day, I'm filming MMA fighters in the backstage in the warm-up room, and this guy passes me by who looks just like GST Income, like the karate nerd. And I'm like, no way, it can't be. And then again, I and, and I check like, is his maybe his brother is an MMA fighter? And it's like, yeah, yeah, his brother, I'm, fighter. And yeah, then Bellator. I to, yeah, exactly. And then I go to the uh, to the room and warm-up room. And I'm like, you know. You're Jesse. He's like, yeah, I'm Jesse. I'm like, you know what? Yesterday I stole your list <laughs> from like McDojo's. And then we had a great connection and you know, we had a good laugh and we realized we have a lot in common. And then he invited me to film a seminar he taught. I mean, he organized and Bill Superfoot Wallace was there. And that's how I got in touch with him. So, 
Man, like I remember seeing that video of the two of you, and I'm like, the, these guys are too positive. This is this is this is not. <laughs> this is this is a little weird. <laughs> you know, um, uh, to be fair, uh, we had some things that we both. Uh, how do you, how do I express myself in English here? Uh, there's there's <laughs> some things we're like, you know when this happens in YouTube, he's like, oh yeah, he's like, you know when that happens, I'm like, oh I hate that. So we have a lot of that, especially off record. I think uh, I think the word you're looking for might be camaraderie. Sure, sure, but also we yeah. like we just we ranted about a lot of things to each other uh, off report, record, report, yeah. so it wasn't like we were like we were complaining about stuff. So we weren't like nice, nice all the way through. Uh, but but yeah, we both are nice guys, and and, and we have that <laughs> image as well. So now that you say it, you're know, like, oh yeah, that was like a double power of <laughs> positiveness. Yeah, I'm just like this. This video is so happy; it could po it could probably power Iceland for a while, right? Like just yeah, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. I see. If they, ever, if they ever lose thermal power, you know. Yeah, I'll think about it. Maybe that, that's a business opportunity. <laughs> yeah, just be just. You gotta really just be positive and smile. <laughs> I think that the number of times I've seen your you in video and you're not smiling is like totals five minutes. But the rest you know, of the time, you're just like <laughs> it's true. I, I I tend to smile in general, like like even when I'm mad. There's I have to be super mad not to smile. Like even sometimes when I'm mad, there's a bit of a wing, there kind of a smile that I have. So yeah, I'm guilty of that. All right. Well, I just um uh we 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 don't want to take all your time, but I do want to end on uh just a a question. You had mentioned that you're you're very involved with. MMA, like you went from Aikido, very traditional to you're going to Bellator events, filming like like footage for John Kavanaugh and SBG, and you're very deep in the world. How would you describe your current relationship to not just MMA but MMA culture, like the the sports, the news? Like, do you do you follow fighters? Do you are you really into that? Because I know you're looking to have another fight after yeah. since you you had a fight. Uh, you lost a decision in um, Wimp to Warrior, and you're looking to like have another at bat. By the way, I think you, I think you won that fight. I'm just, I'm gonna go ahead and say that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, there's, there's a few different ways that I could answer this, but uh, part, in, especially in terms of the MMA culture. Uh, so the last few months, and I just got back like a week ago. Uh, I was. Um, deeply involved with SBG Ireland, you know, the place of uh, John Hanna, Conor McGregor, a few other high profile UFC fighters, uh, lots of high level pro fighters in general, UFC, Bellator, high, high end amateurs. And I was given the permission to train them. Although eventually I came to a conclusion that I am not, I'm not at that level. You know, I wasn't, I mean, I, I was basically just surviving with those guys. Uh, but still, I was given permission to train with them. And I trained every day, sometimes in the evenings as well. So I, I felt like I really had, and I was also preparing for a fight um, because eventually it didn't happen because I got injured. But I was preparing for a fight. So I kind of had a real fight camp with high profile fighters. So I really got a sense of, you know, got a really a really good touch to to be with those guys and, and talk to them and, and experience the lifestyle myself. Uh, again, as you mentioned, I went back doors to the MMA shows, spoke to John Kavanaugh a bunch. So yeah, there was a lot of MMA I got exposed to. And uh, I, to my main message would be actually, I got, I was very impressed. Uh, the guys, initially I was intimidated by all the pro guys, especially the big ones. I was like, I thought they're going to kill me. And I thought, you know, this is this is scary but after i got to know them uh most of them are super nice guys uh very caring uh, good natured and maybe that's part of the sbg culture as well it is i feel like uh kind of encouraged but nevertheless uh it was really impressive like the guys and also too like i saw cases where and i won't say specifically who's what who did what but you know the trash talking is is a bad part of MMA it's kind of controversial it the thing is it makes money and I heard stories that some fighters do it just because and it turns out it's true I met uh, at least a few cases where I, I meet an MMA fighter super nice like 
chill guy, barely speaks. And then uh, I, I, I get told by someone else, like, oh, you know, that guy, he's such a trash talker. I'm like, no, you're talking about someone, something else, right? Okay, and then just to, to, out, to interrupt yeah. you, I, I think there's one name that everyone's kind of wondering about. And you don't have to say it. Just blink twice if it's who we think it is. Uh, I, 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 to, to make to make it clear, uh, I will say it out loud. So I, I did meet Connor a few times. Uh, he was there in the gym, etc. You know, we we shared the mat, uh, but I didn't get to know him as a person. I didn't uh, yeah. get get to know him much. Uh, he seemed like a very nice guy actually when I met him, uh, but I don't know him personally. So. To be fair, that's that's not the, the the example I mentioned. It could be, yeah. You know, it's not for me to say. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm satisfied with that. <laughs> yeah, but there's there's some other guys for sure that I met who were, you know, they are public, they are known, and but there there's one thing where, where you what you see in public, and there's another thing what you see when you meet them. So so that's I feel that that gives even a greater sense that MMA actually, as far as I was exposed to. Uh, it's a great culture and and i was happy to be part of it so yeah uh, it's but, funny uh i, I was actually back i was up uh i got the chance to study at uh, trinity college in oxford a few years ago and so i was in england living and i was I, I actually got the chance to train at a local carlson gracie school so that was that was really and everyone else i knew would go and get drunk and i would just go get bruised up come home and they thought i'd get mugged and i'm like no no, no i asked for this and uh uh, I got the chance to go to Ireland and um, I got the chance to, I was still a white belt at the time. So I, di I didn't get to train with the high level, like regular classes, but I, I trained with like uh, at an open mat and like a beginner's class. And I just remember going, I showed up uh, uh, an American in a 10th planet rash guard and everyone looked at me like I was a strange alien, but they were so nice. And they could have bullied the crap out of me because I really didn't know much at the time. And they were they were like, oh, I thought uh, you'd, you'd pull out some crazy leg locks because of the 10th Planet Rash Guard. And I'm like, I should have left this at home. This was not a good idea. But uh, yeah, it's it's a very, very unique environment. And the place is huge. Just to double check. So you went to SBJ Ireland specifically? Uh, in Dublin, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry. Just the Dublin. Yeah. So yep. yeah, no, it is like a, a new gym. Like the new facility opened up while I was there, so I got, I got there just at the end of the old facility, the previous one, and I got to be a part of the the new one, the grand opening. Everything, and it is huge. It's like it's it's a bit of a maze. You can get lost in it. Like it takes like a week or so to to because there's different ways, like different ways to get to the same location. So it's a bit of a maze, but it's it's very big. But the culture is again, the culture is really nice, and I think. Uh, again, like MMA is a sport for, you know, more, especially like if you go to the comp competitive world, you do have to have a bit of a, al a sense of an alpha mentality. Like you, you do have to be a badass at some level. And and when a new guy comes, there may be a bit more uh, tension because they don't know, are you a good guy? Are you going to, you know, are you going to go hard or not? And And so there's a bit of that tension for the first few times until everybody gets to know, oh, okay, you're, you're a cool guy. You're not gonna go hard, and and then it's 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 a dream. It's like everyone is super super nice. Is is the desire to be a badass why why you uh, you bulked up and got the tattoos? Or... <laughs> oh yeah, well actually tattoo as it's a, it's a common misunderstanding. Actually, the tattoo I got still while I was in the Aikido uh, kind of ah. it was still in the phase, but it wasn't like people. A lot of people think. I dumped Aikido and then got the tattoo. So it wasn't as cliche, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> I did cut my hair due to MMA, and I'm very happy about that. But but that was like for my fight, I thought, you know what? And I also felt like I want that transformation. I want to make a statement. Uh, but tattoo was prior to that. Uh, but okay, so you started, wearing, you started wearing tank tops then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> in a way, in a way it's true. In a way it's true because uh, when I was doing Aikido, it wasn't sometimes it was even said out loud but but it, you weren't you were encouraged i was encouraged in the community i was to kind of present myself as a sensei 
and uh, and like Batman t-shirts were no go, especially when I'm in public or with my students. And I love Batman, and I was collecting Batman t-shirts, but I would never wear them. And when I started falling out with my keto instructor, I was like, "This is the time! Now I'm gonna just go wild." And that's that's why in a lot of my videos you can see me with Batman t-shirts and eventually tank tops. Uh, but being uh, getting a bit more bulky. I think it's just also a sign of a healthy person. And I realized when I was in the Aikido mentality, Aikido yoga, et cetera, I was, I was not really, I didn't have a very healthy relationship with my body. So getting kind of into a good physique, I feel that's just makes you, makes people trust you more and makes you feel better. And it's just kind of, I think it's a good thing to, to have. I had a similar, uh, the gym I had mentioned earlier, um, one day I'll just make a 40 minute video about that place. It, it was an, a horror yeah. show. Uh, one of my, fr- like there was, there was like, <sighs> but um, I remember my first day thinking I'll show up with my gi and they were like, no, you can't like no jujitsu, no BJJ gis. You need to use our gi. And it was like three XL blue top black pants. Oh my God. And, and they, and then at the end of class, uh, I was used to pr- like the professors going like, good work today. We're, we're going to keep drilling arm bars for the rest of the week. Then we're going to work some top game. Uh, yeah. Also there's a barbecue on Sunday. All right, get out of here. That's the type of thing that teachers that I was, that my Ed would, uh, like say at the end of jujitsu class, but this guy, uh, his, I'll say his name is Barry. But he needed to call him Grandmaster Barry, uh, oh what his God. last name was. And he would like w- class would end, and then like for like twenty minutes, he would sit us down and lecture to us about team ethics and how when you wear our symbol, our sigil, it's a target on your back. The rest of the world is gonna get you, and we need to be a strong unit. We need it. It's us against the world. And the whole time, I'm thinking. Over the summer, I had trained at maybe six jujitsu schools, and they were all friendly with each other. Like I know that's not always the case, but like it, they were. My coach was always okay with cross training because he's like, "I know what I'm teaching is good. You can go, like it's fine." And he, the the the, and I would look around, and also you had to stand at attention in rows. That was another thing, and I was kind of looking, sneaking glances around, and everyone was like, "Yeah, just yeah." target on my back yes yes grandmaster yeah and i'm like but yeah i so that's the type of stuff that i i think i really we got a war uh, not like war against but we got to call out when it's like you can't wear t-shirts you can't do that like you can't do that Uh, yeah absolutely and that is uh, you use the word war sometimes i do feel it's a bit of a war especially like me being uh very vocal and public about one side of that uh, one one camp of the war, uh, but yeah, I do feel like that. Some people are obviously you will never please everyone, and 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 some critical feedback or complaints is an, a regular thing when you're doing something publicly. Uh, but one of the complaints I get is like, uh, and I try to make sure it doesn't happen. But then some people are like, oh, you published the same subject again or you, you talked about that and that and that video and initially i was a bit concerned i was like yeah maybe they're right maybe you know i'm repeating myself but then later i realized you know it's such an important subject that it's not enough just to, sometimes it's not enough to see or speak about it once some people will see one version some people will see the other version and there's maybe the opinion evolved and there's more things to say or it's a different angle but it's not something it's like Oh, I made one single video about um, McDojo's, and now the world is going to become clean from it. It's like no, it's it, you have to keep pushing that again and again, to make it more and more uh, public, so that hopefully whoever goes into a place like you just described, they will learn early on that it's it's not supposed to be that way. It can be even as much as they'll control the language you use. Like I came into this place having jujitsu language in my head, like S grip, like back control, like taking the back. And they would, I would use those terms being like, coach, how do we take the back from here? And they say, no, it's like, it's riding the, the rhino or some 
shit or like and then this was the biggest one because i'd be like s grip and they're like no it's opposing thumb grip you need to say it right i'm like what the okay okay and then they're like what's this i'm like that's that's a just a a grip i don't have a word for it it's a soda can grip i'm like you people are insane i don't like why are you making me do this and i i think it's just the idea that people are like there are people whose only experience with martial arts is this really controlling messed up stuff. So if anyone tells you that you're done covering McDojo's and like the issues out there, no, because these places still make money somehow. And until they don't or are forced to change, we got to keep, keep that message going. You know, it's, yeah. it's yeah. bad. Yeah. I agree uh, with you. You want to say something else? No, no, no. Go. Yeah. So the first of all, it's funny that your example just sounds like a, a textbook McDojo. It's. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I haven't been. I mean, I hate to a degree. I hate the 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 toxic side of Aikido, but I haven't went to such a place like you described. It's it's I will I will end on the biggest example I have and that's that I met I made a really good friend while I was there uh, it was a girl student she was one of their high level brown belts and she was really in love with jujitsu but they didn't do a lot of it for her liking like they they would always try and one they divided the white belts and the colored belts on the mat so the white belts would only learn groin kicks eye pokes and and that's basically it. And then the white belts would – I would look over and I'd see the white – the colored belts doing arm bars badly. And I'm like, I could – like, let me over there. I want to I want to do that And because I was also worried because I was used to getting absolutely destroyed by purple belts. And, the, like, I was a white belt, but, like, yeah, we're going to throw you to the brown belts. Like, you, you're fresh meat. That's your job. Get tenderized. And so me and her would – try and train on our own sometimes. And I, I taught her this mount escape that I learned from my professor that always got me out of a jam. And she was noticing that I was like, I, we did a guard passing drill and I had not only passed a black belt's guard, but I was working a submission. And then when I couldn't get the submission, he started bragging like, oh man, you couldn't get it. And I'm like, <sighs> cause I, it sounds like I'm talking myself up, but I'm not some guy to to toot my own horn. I lose more often in just general in life than I'll ever win. And uh, so I taught her this mount escape and she started using it on the upper belts and they chewed her out for it because they're like, that's not the one we taught you. And eventually, eventually she... Uh, it, they found out that she, I had been taking her to, um, I started going to a jujitsu school about an hour away, like a, a, a cyborg school. And they were the, they found out that I lived far away and they're like, listen, you just, just come on in. You don't got to pay the, the mat fee. You're paying, you're driving an hour and a half. Just come on in. And it was the, I cried. Cause I'm like, thank you. I started bringing her and because I was a white belt under their system, they didn't really care what I did. But they found out about her and they had been using her in all their promotional material, like on the posters and like in the ads. Uh, Cause she's like, a, she's a pretty girl that got really far in the, in the system. And they yelled at her, they brought her in and all the other black belts yelled at her. And they, they basically told her don't come back. And, and then that was it. So yeah, it's, I'm really sorry. I'm, t it, it, I never, I've never really aired this stuff. I've always just sort of been like, but uh I don't like it when people are telling you that you shouldn't be covering this stuff because it's real. Yeah. <sighs> no, you know, I'm the right guy to, to, to tell these stories, but that reminds me as well. It's like, oh, crap, that's still out there. <laughs> but, but yeah, there's just one thing I, I wanted to tell you about. This anyway, he's, he speaks a lot too. But uh, so one thing I wanted to make sure as well, and something that was on my mind and whatever, what's, the story you told just reflects that perfectly is there's some people who you know maybe they lack a sense of not only intelligence too but maybe honesty even against themselves and they 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 are drawn to these places and that's kind of where they thrive you know they get their fake black belt and 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 they they boost their egos and and they kind of 
maybe consciously, subconsciously. Sorry, I'll just let the dog out. <laughs> no worries. That'll be good for views. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm just giving him a chance. I don't know. Okay, it's probably too hot for him. Ah, don't worry anyway, he's a winter dog. So, uh, so yeah, and uh, some people, that's the only place they probably will go. And it's like, well, you know, your it's it's your um, your own thing, do your thing, whatever. It's like it's it's too bad it happens, but but it's twisted. It's and you can't save everyone, but. Uh, there are cases like this friend of yours, uh, this 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 lady, that really has the deep yearning to to real to learn jujitsu, to become a good martial artist, to to become you know to empower herself, and she falls into that cult which brainwashes. And and some people don't get it. People who haven't went through that, they they look at it, and sometimes I get that comment. I, I kind of don't even look at it, but but I do get it. It's like Oh, it's your it's it's your own fault that you believed. You know how can you not see that Aikido doesn't work? The thing is, they have such a tight structure that when you're in it, they make you believe that you're wrong and they're right, and it's it's hard to get out of that. It's you know cults are like that. And you mentioned Scientology, I think does the same thing. From as far as I know, they're very good at what they do, and even smart, intelligent, honest people uh, sometimes fall into that. Uh, but at the end of the day, that's that's what I want to make sure that those people that my videos would reach, specifically those people who maybe by accident will watch one of those videos and will consider one of the list items of a McDojo and they're like, be like, damn, yeah, that sounds like my dojo. Maybe there is something wrong. You know, it's, it'll start that process. And those people I want to make sure that I reach. Or, or also to the very last one is that some people who've been down that path and kind of went away from uh, the whole cult mentality and et cetera. Uh, sometimes it's tough to to let it go, or sometimes you still question yourself. Like maybe I'm the wrong, maybe I'm the bad guy. Maybe they're right. Uh, there's something that's still not fully healed. And I feel like addressing those subjects and telling, look, it's a big cult. You know, it happens. Like look at you know story A, B, and C, and D. It's not your fault. I think it's it's a good thing to have. So so I think yeah, it's it's a good journey. Just, just an update. Like, I, I, I just want to confer, uh, let you know that the the girl is act is still training jujitsu, like, like five days a week. She's now she moved to be close. Like, she got a job that happened to be closer to the gym I was taking her to, and now she's like a bigger part of that gym than I am, and she's like really kicking ass. Uh, she's probably due for a promotion soon. So that's like, there's a good ending to that story. And I, to your point of of like blaming yourself. I remember thinking I was so new at, in martial arts as a whole. I had done karate for like a month as a kid, but I knew nothing. And I remember going into this place feeling something was off, but I so desperately didn't want to be like a, a braggart or an arrogant guy. And I didn't want to be the problem. So I just like, I'm like, oh no, I'm the, I'm just new. I need to keep it all in here. Cause I'm just, I'm here to learn. And I remember when I went back to, train with ed like the for that winter break i was like hey i've been learning this stuff at this other place and i tried to explain it to him and he's like kevin if you bring this dog shit to me ever again i'm gonna i'm gonna bump you to a negative white belt like i'm gonna take your white belt away and give you just like a belt to hold your pants up and it was just like that was the first that was the domino of where i'm like okay but it's still training and I thought that was a healthy way to look at it. Like, okay, it's not the best, but it's something. But even like have going into that with that good mentality of, I just need to get some work done. I, you're almost better doing nothing just because you're, you're actively financially supporting a place that's leading people down a really messed up path. And they're getting kids really hooked at a young age and convinced of this stuff. And it's just a bad cycle. And then, so that in order to, uh, keep it going. I start. I just started a grappling club on campus, and I ran. I found a bunch of random wrestlers that were just on campus looking to roll around, and I'm get, getting more out of that than I ever did uh, at the place. All right, I I'm keeping you up. It's late where you are, so if you just had like to, final note, I, anyone that happens to see this, that's that's like maybe on the fence or just in that transition 
that you found yourself in, what kind of message would you have wanted to hear at that point? Like where you're, you're not sure where to go and there's a fork in the road. It's a good question. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I mean, no, 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 it's your, your, your fine. It's a good question. I'm just thinking it, uh, it's not one where I want to just like, Oh, A, B and C. Uh, I'll think for a second. Uh, Cut your hair. Yeah, exactly. Cut Get your hair. Beef up. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay i think i probably my main message is simply it depends on wh which which stage that person is at if it's an initial stage an early stage of questioning the person is deep into it I'm not sure because i have a strong belief that people who are in those cultish martial arts they and i had doubts about aikido you know, forever you know, from early days, I just always suppressed it. But whoever has that doubt, I'd say just go test and pressure test yourself. You know, expose yourself. Go go to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gym. Go to uh, boxing, Muay Thai, whatever. Pressure testing, effect, uh, efficient martial arts school. And try it out. If you believe it works or your instructor tells you it works, try it out. Find someone nice. And as, as people hear, it's... Most of the jiu-jitsu guys and MMA guys are not as bad as they would imagine. They're they're most of them are really good people, and so just you know meet someone, try it out, and expose yourself to reality. Pressure test it. Be be more of a scientist than a believer, and uh, and maybe just kind of also using what we just spoke recently, uh, just just a moment ago. Uh, whoever is kind of leaving that or is on the brink of leaving it. And has that kind of guilty sense or or is unsure i'd like to say yeah it's it's not your problem uh if a martial art is solid and it's real and it's honest most likely you will not have that doubt and like like as you said your instructor your your professor uh had no problem with you cross training because i like what you said and it's it's, it's a true statement it's like he's sure that it works he doesn't He's not worried whether you're going to go somewhere else or or whatnot because it works. And also, to even myself, with a year of jujitsu, was interesting. Obviously, uh, I felt more confident than I felt after 14 years of Aikido. So, so basically, yeah, if you're on the right path, most likely you'll have other doubts. You'll have like the doubts of, will I ever learn this? Will I ever tap out anyone? You know, the regular. But that's but that's part of the the journey. But in terms of having doubts about, you know, is this the right school? Maybe you know, maybe it's my fault. Most likely, it's the wrong 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 direction of looking. Probably it's, it is probably it's something bad with the school. So yeah, that's what I would say. I, this this just occurred to me, and I swear this is my last question. But uh, do you think that because uh, you were questioning things at the time of when you were starting to question Aikido? you had reached the pinnacle of Aikido. I don't know how, like if there's anything after what you got to, but you were considered a, a high level Aikido instructor. You had your black belt. Do you think it was because you had gotten to that point that you were capable of giving things that kind of thought? Like, like would you, you wouldn't have been as ready to question things at one of the intermediary ranks. I think it's, uh, in terms of my personal development, it would have been better, obviously, if I would have questioned it earlier, then I would have probably woken up earlier but because I was a very devoted student. I was I was one of the best students of the organization of my instructor because I was just like, tell me what to do, I'm gonna do it. Uh, but uh, so yeah, the questioning part was very low and slowly it kind of opened it up. Uh, but uh, but in terms of being doing that publicly, I am happy that I walked down the path far enough that that gives me kind of a, a greater voice in the whole discussion and still people give me shit they're like oh you still did the wrong aikido you know your sensei you didn't know anything whatnot etc etc but the fact is now i was a living student for a few years i had my own school i i i, I traveled the world training and i had like a recognized uh, uh, black belt by the heads dojo of the world in japan so i had i went through the path far more further than a lot of aikido guys do and 
that gave me yeah that gave me some more credibility and, and and more awareness of what i was speaking i really had a good flavor of what i'm talking about so i could say oh look this is actually bad and i will tell you why because i've been down the path if i would have done it earlier probably wouldn't be had been as impactful because yeah it would just be more difficult to articulate or to trust the message so i feel uh, yeah, and it's it's also too harder the further down the path you go, and I feel that's why a lot of people has have given me, and it's I can just pretty much quote it, but they would, uh, I feel like a lot of people giving me uh, a certain uh, level of respect because I was far down that path, and I understand why that respect was given because usually the further down you go, the more difficult it is to question, and the more difficult it is to let go, and yeah, so. So it's not necessarily easier with higher grades to do that, uh, but I think it's still worth it. All right. So I, I guess the, the to, to codify that for for people watching, I, I I think, and you can tell me if I'm wrong. Don't let your your belt keep you from, or your rank keep you from asking questions. I think yeah. that any discipline, no matter what, because I, I, I my white belt kept me from. I think asking a lot of important questions of, of the people that I was paying to instruct me, y you are perfectly capable of having thoughts about something despite not being uh, very experienced. Those thoughts may be incorrect. And if they are, you'll get told and it'll make sense to you. Like it'll all sort of be, you'll be able to filter out because I think a lot of people have more common sense than they give themselves credit for. So do, do not let being super inexperienced or so experienced that you're scared of taking a look in the mirror keep you from uh, being honest and, and true with yourself. I, I guess that's what we're trying to 100%. say. Oh, really, you, you said it really well. And, and the very last thing I'll, I'll just drop in as well, uh, the, the cultish martial arts, that's what they want you to believe the opposite from what you said they want you to believe that until you have 10 years in you have no word to say you have your opinion is, is crap I mean, you don't know nothing in a good martial arts school you know they'll give you space to question but they'll very quickly prove you wrong clearly they'll be like okay roll with me and i'll show you it doesn't work and you'll be like oh, okay you're right but it's not going to be like silence stop speaking you're wrong and you can't speak until you know 10 years later so there's a strong difference between the two so but basically whatever you said is really well defined. i i get my my soft spokenness from my mother but <laughs> <laughs> uh okay well that was that was our first guest on the jiu-jitsu times podcast and no one died no one's gonna get sued i don't think uh, Rokas, thank you so, so much for coming on. It was an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Uh, Kevin will probably give me a text message saying, "Yo, that was that dude was that dude was really cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> he was a, was a cool dude. Yeah, cool, cool dude. Hope to hope to roll with him. Cool dude." <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, real real quick, yeah. where where can people find you? What uh, anything you want to plug? Go right ahead. Sure. So, martial arts journey as simple as it gets, but that's uh, primarily on YouTube. Uh, Instagram, I'm not much into it, not yet, but uh, also too, one thing I want to announce is that after I did do some journeys right now and I'm a bit in a, I will train jiu-jitsu and whatnot while I'm here in Lithuania, but also I'll be wrapping up and uh, editing some of the stuff I did. So there's some exciting things coming. Uh, and my plan is to, I did some traveling and training and I documented it, uh, some stuff like a whole mix. Uh, I did like my first karate class and I filmed that. I did, uh, I went to like a legit great jiu-jitsu school, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, it's a self-defense class, then SBG MMA. So I'm going to make that into episodes, publish it and do some more travel. So it's going to be quite exciting. So I think, yeah, uh, I encourage people to check it out if they're interested. All right. Uh, definitely be on the lookout for that. But uh, as always, I have been Kevin Bradley. Uh, Kevin Gallagher already uh, left. Uh, yeah. That was awesome, man. Good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Be seeing you, people. Bye.